In the first part of our course in linear algebra, we're going to study something called Euclidean spaces. So whenever you hear the word space, you can think of that as a special kind of set. Euclidean spaces include R2, which is something that we've seen before, but the objects are called vectors. So for right now, we're just going to think of a vector as an ordered pair we're going to write it in a special way using the angle brackets. Oops. So you have something that looks like a less than and a greater than. So instead of using parentheses, we're using angle brackets to indicate that it's a vector. And it's an ordered pair, meaning the order obviously matters. 1 comma 2 will be different from 2 comma 1. And x and y have to be real numbers. Now R2, as you can see, you just read R2 as it is written, R2. We also call it Euclidean 2-space. We also call it just 2-space. We may just call it the plane. Uh, something else that's familiar to us is R3. We live in a three-dimensional world. Some people say there's more dimensions, but certainly in terms of spatial dimensions, we have three spatial dimensions. So a vector in R3 it is an ordered triplet triplet, meaning there's three components there, where all of the components are real numbers. And R3 may be called Euclidean 3-space, or just 3-space, or simply space. Um, in that case, you, you understand that you're talking about three spatial dimensions. Well, you could have more dimensions than just three. Obviously, that doesn't have a nice geometric interpretation. But you could have n uh, components. So in that case, if the uh, vectors have n, some number larger than three, uh, or some undetermined number n, n is a counting number, uh, then we call it an n-tuple. The vectors have n components. I've been using this word component, uh, and that's what we call the, the numbers that are listed inside the angle brackets are called the components of the vector. And Rn may be called Euclidean n space. The Euclidean space R1 is algebraically equivalent to the real numbers. So it's a very special case. And um, so the components, again, we, they're ordered. It matters. So in this uh, vector here, which has five components, so it belongs to R5, the first component is negative 1. The second one is 3. The third component is 0. The fourth component is 7. And the fifth component is 12. A scalar, well, a scalar is just a regular number. In this course, we're only going to deal with real scalars, so they'll be real numbers. And we talk about scalars to distinguish them from vectors. Uh, vector notation, uh, super important that we tell the difference between variables which represent vectors and variables which represent scalars. So if we have something typewritten, we may see, and it's true in, in your textbook in some places, that the uh, vectors are written using boldface font. Uh, to make it even more clear, uh, I will always use an arrow above the variable to indicate that that variable represents a vector quantity. Uh, but when you're writing handwritten, whether I write something on the whiteboard or in cl class, write it on the, the chalkboard, I should always put an arrow above uh, any variable which represents a vector. And you, 
And when you hand in something, whether it be a quiz or a test or homework, if a variable represents a vector, it must have an arrow above it. Very special vector that we're going to refer to a lot is called the zero vector. All of its components, so a zero vector in Euclidean space, is a vector whose components are all zero. So sometimes we're going to put a subscript on there. Uh, so a zero with an arrow and a subscript of two means that we're talking about the zero vector in R2. But if the uh, context is clear, then we're just going to omit the subscript. Many times I'll do that. I'll just put zero with a arrow above it to indicate the zero vector. So we're going to start with some simple vector arithmetic. Uh, you can add vectors. They have to have the same number of components in order to make the addition defined. So if they have the same number of components, you just add the corresponding components here. So if I'm adding u plus v, I'll add together the first components. That'll be the first component of the sum. Then the corresponding second components, corresponding third components. Subtraction is the same idea. And um, if we are uh, using, I'm sorry. yeah, subtraction is the same idea. And then uh, in terms of multiplying by a scalar, so it's very important. We're taking a vector, multiplying it by a scalar. We just distribute that scalar to all of the components. However, vector arithmetic is limited. So there are certain operations we can do with uh, scalars that we can't do with vectors. So first of all, vector multiplication means nothing. Now, if you've taken multivariable calculus, you might say, hey, well, what about the dot product or the cross product? Well, those are new operations that can be formed with uh, vectors, uh, but can't be done with scalars. But they're, And they look like multiplication, but they're not multiplication. <coughs> Uh, vector division, of course, also is meaningless. And finally, uh, this is the big one. This is the most common mistake, is that uh, students write exponents on vectors. And that is a meaningless bit of notation. So we've looked at uh, vectors from an algebraic point of view. In the next video, we're going to look at them from a geometric point of view.